the gospel reflection of the day from the congregation of the Daughters of St. Paul. As the day begins, listen, reflect and live the word of God, the best food ever for the soul. Welcome to Tuesday of the 20th week in Ordinary Time. We celebrate the memorial of St. Bernard, Abbot and Doctor of the Church. May he continue interceding for us all in our different needs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our theme for reflection today is, What will there be for us? having given up everything and followed you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 19, verse 23 to 30. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men this is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will be there for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you that you have followed me in the new age. Then the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory. Will yourself sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel? And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my sake will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord Sister and brother in Christ Jesus, it is interesting how today's gospel gives us a paradox of losing and gaining. We lose what we keep and we gain what we give away. Indeed, this is a paradox. As he said, everyone who has given up houses or brothers and so on for the sake of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. In that way, generosity will be adequately repaid, both in this life and in eternity. From here, Jesus offers us an incomparable treasure which no money can buy and no thief can steal. Isn't it beautiful? We know that Jesus was not opposed to wealth per se, nor was he opposed to the wealthy. We know he had many friends who were well-to-do, including some notorious tax collectors. One even became an apostle. Jesus' warning reiterated the wisdom of the Old Testament. Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is perverse in his ways. These are the good things that we set in our hearts, the values that we uphold, and the principle of being more, not having more. Many a times accumulating much material wealth, on the other hand, is not dreadful unless we guard our hearts and set our treasures on God and his everlasting kingdom. Jesus is emphatic. Why is he so cautious about wealth? Wealth can many a times make us falsely independent. You see, for you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing. This we find in Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. Wealth can also lead us into hurtful desires and self selfishness. You know, it is extremely difficult for the rich to embrace the radical call of discipleship in the kingdom of God. 
But again, salvation does not depend on our ability, but on God's generous grace. So the key point for us here is to be reminded about the dangers of wealth and possessions. They can become our God with a small g, a stumbling block, a choking point, a diversion, and even our downfall if they become the things we cannot give up to follow Jesus. We all need the guidance of the Holy Spirit, loving friend and the strength of a dedicated Christian community to yield to Jesus' call in all areas of our lives, including using our wealth and possessions to serve one another. May we pray for this grace, not only for us, but also for those we share our faith with. Amen. Have a fruitful day. You've been listening to the Gospel Reflection for today from the Congregation of the Daughters of St. Paul. Remember to listen, reflect and live the Word of God, the best food ever for the soul.